Welcome to the Quick Start video guide for demonstrating multicast routing on the Okapi router. In this demo, we exhibit the capability of Okapi routing platform by enabling multicast routing over it. Okapi's industry standard CLI will be used for setting up the router interface and also enabling RIP protocol on these interfaces, evincing the need for multicasting through comparison with basic routing, enabling multicast routing by using the IP multi multicast router command. And finally, we show multicast traffic being routed by a copy to different network machines. Additionally, we also toggle between enabling and disabling multicast routing on a single interface to show the effects on the multicast traffic. The present slide depicts the network diagram. Here we have two LAN segments and two routers. LAN 1 with network ID 192.168.0.0/16 and consisting of member machines 1 and 2 with the addresses 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.5 respectively. Whereas LAN2 contains machine 3 and 4 with the IP addresses 172.16.1.2 and 172.16.1.5 respectively and the LAN segment itself is connected to router B through the 172.16.0.0/16 network. Lastly, router A and B are connected through the Ethernet link. The hypothetical network of the previous slide is realized in the virtualization environment of VMware. The same can be seen on the screen. The virtual network suite designated as PPP will now be powered on. Starting with router A, we begin by configuring the two Ethernet interfaces. To Fast Ethernet 0, we assign the IP 192.168.1.1/16 to associate it with LAN 1. To Fast Ethernet 1, we provide the address 202.16.1.1 slash 16. In the next step, we enable RIP on both the interfaces by using the network command. Proceeding to router B, We set up the fast Ethernet interfaces to fast Ethernet 0, we allocate the IP address 202.16.1.2 slash 16.
and to fast ethernet 1 we give the IP 172.16.1.1 slash 16 and thereby make it a member of the second LAN segment. In the next step, we enable RIP on both the interfaces by using the network command. Consequently, we use the show IP route command to see the RIP discovered routes. A new route to network 192.168.0.0 slash 16 that is LAN 1 via fast ethernet 0 has been discovered. Coming back to router A, again we use the show IP route command to see the RIP discovered routes. Here as well a new route to network 172 dot 16 dot o dot o slash 16 that is LAN 2 via fast ethernet 1 has been discovered. The router configurations established so far only allow basic routing on both the routers. This means a machine can reach another machine present on any other LAN. The same can be verified by pinging machine 4 from machine 1. Moving to machine 1 present on LAN 1. Here the IP and default route with router A as gateway is set. Pinging machine 4 present on LAN 2 having the IP 172.16.1.5. Five. As multicasting has not been enabled on any of the routers, multicast data from any network machine will not reach the other. To elucidate this point, we now start multicast sender application on the present machine. We use multicast IP 239.0.0.0 with the port 1024 and send the traffic at the rate of one packet every 10 microseconds. Switching to machine 3 and initiating the multicast receiver, we can see that nothing is received at this end. To tackle this, we need to enable the multicast routing on both the routers. Moving on to router A, we enable multicast routing by using IP multicast router command. We have three possible protocols for multicasting. DVM, RPD, PIM dense mode and PIM sparse mode. Here we are only demonstrating PIM in the dense mode. Enable multicast routing on both fast ethernet interfaces by using IP PIM dense mode command on each interface node. Proceeding to router B, similarly enabling multicast routing, PIM TM on router B, enable multicast routing on both fast Ethernet interfaces by using IP PIM tense mode command on each interface node.
Now, as we have enabled multicast routing on both the routers, the multicast receiver running on machine 3 has started receiving multicast packets. The same is evident from the screen output. The dots which are now appearing are indicative of the multicast packets We run the same receiver application on machine 2 as well. We run one more receiver application on machine 4 on LAN 2, thus making one transmitter and three receivers in total. Coming back to router B. We now disable multicasting on fast Ethernet 0. Consequently, machine 3 and 4 stop receiving multicast packets but machine 2 continues to receive them because it's on the same LAN segment that is LAN 1. We again go back to router B and re-enable multicasting on fast Ethernet 0. This brings back multicasting as would be obvious from the screen output of machine 3 and 4.